Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests joining us this morning. We have Gito, Ian, and Telfar. Welcome. Hey, hey what's what's up? Up? <laughs> I'm from Left City. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn. They're yeah. from Brooklyn. Yeah. I currently live in Brooklyn. So. That's what I'm talking like... about. We live in Brooklyn on this side here. Right. Okay, well, I live on in Brooklyn on this side here too. But <laughs> yeah. I'm from Left Rock City. Tiff, I'm from okay. Queens. Tiff the stylist, who's was like my sister. She's been telling me about you for a long time. I was like, Envy, you know he's from Left Rock, right? What? And I was like, no. He was like, no, he's from Rack. He's like in the middle of the hood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm. Well, people say I'm on the, I'm on the opposite side. I'm on Horace Harding Expressway, 50, 57th Avenue is real. So okay. <laughs> that's like where Noriega and you know his building is like kind of like around. So you knew Nori when he was shooting people. Uh, did I? No, I, I, I knew him from the music mostly. Oh, okay. okay. So you didn't <laughs> know, know Poppy. Okay. You didn't know Poppy. I didn't know, right. I didn't know Poppy you from Left Rack. Okay. Nah. okay. But what high school did you go to Queens? I'm just curious. Uh, I didn't go to high school in Queens. Well, well, I went to Watkins Mill High School in Maryland. So. Okay. Well, let's tell. Well, tell yeah. us how this whole brand came about. And why I'm so excited that you guys are here. I mean, this is amazing to me because you know I got my Telfar bag right here. Okay. <laughs> Well, I mean, I started this brand when I was 15. Um, I officially, like, you know, like I was making clothes for my friends in high school and, you know, selling jeans that I remade for $20 at my locker. And basically, I never really had another job other than that. And I moved back to my family's house in 2003 from high school and just been grinding since then and kind of. I started this brand because the clothes that I wanted to make didn't exist. I feel know? like that's the Cliff Notes version of this yeah. story. What, what are the details? Well, the clothes that I wanted to wanted to wear didn't didn't exist. You know, basically, like I, I don't understand why clothes were genderless or mm -hmm. gendered. You know, so it's like I think you know, like when I was younger, I wanted to wear like a Calvin Klein crop top, mm -hmm. baggy jeans, and you know, so it's like those things I wasn't allowed to buy because they were in the women's section or this thing and that thing. So when I started making clothes, I was like, you know, I want to make clothes that are just for everybody. That is not necessarily a women's, you know, thing or a men's thing. Mm -hmm. So from there, you know, I kept kind of creating things and just being more and more obsessed with like kind of things that didn't exist mm -hmm. and making these things that could be for everybody you know, that were specifically for me, that I made for me, you know, so. At what point did it, it start to make money? Because what I love about your story is, like you said, you just have always made clothes, but it wasn't always lucrative for you. And so sometimes people <laughs> think it happened overnight. We saw the Bushwick Birkin, and then all of a sudden you blew up, but there was a lot before that. Yeah, it wasn't all of a sudden. Like I said, I've been doing that since, you know, um, the early 2000s, you know. I, I went to Pace University um, freshman year and I it was between you know business school and you know kind of making clothes and I decided to do both at the same time like I didn't want to go to fashion school because I kind of thought I knew everything already and I didn't want to learn something that because every time that I learn something or go to school to learn something I hate mm -hmm. it so, <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of you know I was you know making I was remaking a lot of like I would deconstruct clothes and, you know, sell them on the Lower East Side to, like, consignment shops. And they started to sell. You know, mm -hmm. people would buy them. And that's how I paid my way through school. And Where does one get the funding to, I guess, uh, do what oh, you did? I mean, I was in the clubs to get extra money. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I was a DJ, you know, downtown. Oh, where? And, What's your yeah. DJ name? So far. I don't know okay. anything else. It's like, you know, my name's kind of enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Basically, like, that was, like, a way for me to kind of meet people and, you know, still be able to go to school, get up, and work on the line. So I was kind of working. Talk what, closer what, to the mic. What, 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 was the, <laughs> what, what was the first thing that you created that, you know, was actually lucrative for you, that actually sold, and you was like, okay, now I have a legit company? I mean, there are always things, you know, like I used to deconstruct Hanes t-shirts, you know how you would buy them three in a pack mm -hmm. and I would put all three of them together to kind of make this like kind of tent t-shirt is what I called it. And there are different variations of the shirt and I would sell it for like a hundred bucks and, you know, that's how I got through, you know, that was like the first thing that I think that I made, you know, that people had that I actually met some of my best friends wearing this garment. You Who was know, the first so. celebrity to wear one of your pieces that you was like, oh, wow celebrity 
loose, loose, loosely celebrity. Loosely, I'm gonna be offended though. But right. I'm gonna be offended. But loosely, I mean, like you know, the first person I would say, like you know, very kind of early on, I would say Solange really supported, really? She, and she still supports me. How did you get Solange? Your, your She's just cool. She's a cool person. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, she knows what she likes and, you know. Is that who put Beyonce onto it? Um, I don't know. Maybe, mm-hmm. you know. Did she reach out to you? Did she just happen to buy it in the store? Did you, um, see it? Did you send the stuff? No, she reached out to me and we did something at the Guggenheim. Um, like when she was doing, um, what's the name of the album? Satan Haram. Um, Seat at the Table? Seat at the Table tour, mm-hmm. yeah. So... Uh, she had different designers kind of dressing each performance. I was at, you know, art spaces, and I got to do the one at the Guggenheim, and that's, like, where we met and, like, got the vibe nice. and kind of, you know, that was, like, the first person to really kind of, you know. That's not the loosely celebrity you was talking about. No, 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 Because it's, like, I feel like all my friends are celebrities, yeah. so it's, like, everybody downtown was doing that before, you know, mm-hmm. and that's, like, you know, who... I was dressing, you know, it's like. As a black designer, do you think that uh, it was difficult for you when you were first getting started? Because I see now a lot of people are celebrating Mm -hmm. black designers, but I feel like it's such a hard road. We've heard people talk about the difficulties in the fashion (laughs) industry. I mean, like all the things that I think are celebrated now were not necessarily a thing that was a plus before, you know, it's like I was doing collections that were, you know, like men's and women's both, you know, like, it's just like I'm a unisex line, you know, so I didn't get a lot of coverage because I thought, you know, like, oh, I'm doing men's and women's and it's women, men's fashion week and women's fashion week. And I'm showing doing women's fashion week. So I wouldn't get the men's attention. And, you know, and I for a really long time, I just didn't get a review. And then, you know, like 10 years, right? 10 years. Right. It took 10 years to really get, you know, like fashion attention. But they were there like the mm-hmm. people that were there at those shows. They just couldn't write about it, wow. you know? Mm-hmm. They couldn't write about it for whatever reason, you know. Because you're black. And, well, you said it, yeah. you know. Um, and, you know, I, I've i always been like, you know, if I'm the best at what I do, you know, I'm going to get attention for it, you know, for what I do. And I still hold by that, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like, so I each season, it was like just kind of over-exceeding, 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 but nobody was actually paying attention to it. And, you know, I think that the more... I kept doing what I was doing. <laughs> they had no choice but to kind of pay attention to what I was doing. Did you close out Fashion Week this year, or was I closed it out this year? Is that is that an honor? Yeah, whatever I value you put week on this it. Year. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. To me, they slept on you. To um, me. but I slept on them too. You know, it's like I'm really comfortable in what I've been doing. It's like people that support me support me. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the new attention that comes is comes with confusion too, right? About what this brand is and what I'm supposed to be, and you know the roadmap of what you're supposed to be as the you know whatever people esteem as like a black designer. That like, oh, I'm glad you. you know? I want to ask you this because I saw people upset. They were talking about uh, the price of one of the bags going up, <laughs> uh-huh. and they were saying this is supposed to be affordable. Oh, the yeah, bag, yes, the circle, the bag. circle bag, the circle bag, the so infamous circle bag. Because uh, I'm so happy that you're <laughs> well, here. Well, you, you know, you know, uh, you know when. You have a bag, you know, mm-hmm. and it's a different bag from what this bag is. Yes, that circle bag is amazing. Yeah, it has more features. The strap's detachable, you know, so it's a different bag that's a different price, you know. Can I buy mm-hmm. that from you? That, you one? Is that one for sale? Yeah, this one's for sale. I want to buy that. This one's for sale, but I don't know if it's available. It might be sold out. You're trying to buy that one. I want to buy right that one. one. That no. one? Yeah. We got you. We got you. One. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you do don't have take, to get... Don't take Gito's bag. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's your... Oh, my fault. Yeah, yeah. 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 you yeah. like, got it. Calm down. Now, I want to talk about this a little bit, too, because now we're talking about buying bags and how they sell out really yeah. quickly. So we're going to talk about what you have created. But I did mm-hmm. manage to get my hands on the corned beef bag. I happen to be... Uh, Word. Yeah. Word. I happen to get it corn immediately. Corned beef bag. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the name of corned beef. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's what it looks like, right? Before you fry it. <laughs> Great color. You know, I'm corned beef spam mm-hmm. friendly. You know, the bag's vegan. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> vegan corned beef bag. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, this bag, too, it's like, 
all that controversy that was going on about this bag is like I'm uh, it's like if you de- consider me a designer luxury brand mm-hmm. you know it's like people there's bags designer bags that are way more expensive than this right because I was looking you know? Chanel's raised their prices twice already this year and yeah and I mean you can't nobody's even get saying anything bag. about yeah. this and also too I think people that also too probably don't know about the brand and think that I'm raising the price of the regular shopping bag which I priced that specifically based on like what I was making as a DJ at night. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like 120 bucks was what I got for DJing, you know, like mm-hmm. an hour set. And I know I could have afforded that, you know, like after it's like if I did three gigs that, you know, night or week or whatever. I just want it's you like know, Envy, I could get that back. Envy hates DJs like you. Really? You bring the market value down for everybody. Well, I mean... $120? <laughs> that's, I mean, that's how we all started, though. Yeah. Yeah, this is so, a long time ago. Okay, it's okay, like, okay. I would I would go to three, four money. clubs a night, yeah. you know, DJ, like, every night during a week to be able to do a show during Fashion Week, you know, and not make yeah. money off no, the clothes. <laughs> Remember, Fab paid me $300 a show on tour. Wow. Back then. But what if somebody was pricing you out now? Like that could have happened. You, now. Name your, the internet. you gotta start somewhere. Like you no. can't start okay. at big. Yeah, you, you can't be like we don't want to bring oh, the forgive, value. Forgive down me for it. trying to speak up for DJs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, definitely you deserve more. But at the time, you know, I was doing what I had to do to not <laughs> actually have a nine to five job that would distract Ooh. me from or or work for anybody. What's you know? the balance of of having enough bags available for people that want to get them? Because they sell out so quickly, and then also, you know, and also saying, mm-hmm. okay, as I expand, we can sell more and we can have more drips. So, what's the balance between? Yeah, really on it. Right, yeah. I know. Well, you know, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah, you got on the top part, <laughs> lingo, right, down. Okay. So, um, what is that we balance? We do make enough bags, but there's just increasingly more people that want, you know, kind of to get a bag. And there's always more people than the bags that we make. So it's like each time we we drop thousands of bags each time that we drop a bag. Because at the same time, you don't want to oversaturate, right? I don't like, want do to oversaturate, but I think it's a cool thing. Like when I get tweets that I just got up at nine in the morning, I missed this thing and I took my kid to this place and I, you know, and all these different things. I'm like, damn, that sucks. But, <laughs> you know, but thank you. I was you ever ask, feel like you know? you're too too accessible? Only reason I say that is because nobody can tweet Jordan and say, hey, none of the Jordans are available. And I stood in line all day. But I think that's the point of this is like I'm not a regular fashion brand. You know, it's like if anything is like the community that made this brand what it is, is like kind of really important to kind of nurture that. It's like we talked. It's like why we have a TV station now, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like we talk to people all day long. I, <laughs> Not I, me personally, but, you know, someone's talking to someone all day long, mm-hmm. you know? I was um, going to ask about the prices before, to go back to it. You know, people okay. are mad about the prices, but everything, price Five, six, seven. Up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you, they can't expect any brand to keep the same prices when the prices of gas are going up, so you got to get the, the materials. But, the price of leather is going up. Everything. Yeah, but that's the thing. The price of the shopping bag, well, we're keeping shopping. that. Exactly right. the same. How are you able to keep that with expenses bag. going up? Are you just taking um, a smaller I, Well, I mean, I think with the popularity of it, and that's the entry point to mm-hmm. the brand and people understanding it, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, you know, I've been around since the early 2000s. You know, people just now are like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, the Telfar bag. Yeah, now they're making clothes. It's like, no, the clothes <laughs> have been here. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The clothes actually are why a lot of people respect this bag, you know? And that's why people bought into it, because it was the thing that they could get, you know, that wasn't necessarily this runway thing that, you know, as we scaled the business now, we actually have clothes that are available. What about a store? Buy. Like, you know how so, some of these... Oh, uh, the flagship. Tell them be patient. Uh, yes. The flagship store. I don't know if there was a one that's... There, there is new. one coming. Okay. We're opening a store. Wow. This year. Boom. In New York City. New York City. Gotta be. Yeah. And we're still um, deciding where that's going to be, but I think... Like as, yeah, I, I don't I don't want to say too much about it, but, but we're opening a store this year. And you, do you remember when the shift happened for Telfar? Like when just the shift of, oh man, now we 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 really booming now. <laughs> I I mean I think I'm constantly shifting because like I said I've been doing this since I was like 15, but mm-hmm. I think there was definitely a shift in when the when, you know, the world ended uh, and you know, a certain way of kind of operating stopped, you know? Mm. Um, like, in 20, 2019, we were like, I kind we wanted to exit the fashion system by 2020, you know, just because there's so little that you can actually do that's new, 
mm-hmm. within just being in this seasonal kind of like <laughs> I didn't even know just like I I don't know I I I I to explain it is just like it's just like it didn't fit the person that I am or the purpose that I'm hoping to achieve with my line. Mm. <laughs> you so, know, so, so what changed the world or your your mindset? Or? I think. I think, you know, like we exited the fashion system, meaning we weren't doing seasonal shows anymore. Um, we took everything in-house, um, came back mm-hmm. to New York from Europe. You know, I, I was in Europe four times a year, mm-hmm. you know, kind of doing this whole sales thing, stopped selling the stores and kind of focused on our customer selling things in-house making a hundred percent of what i make yes direct to consumer <laughs> you, know I mean? you can do that that's um, great you built up that base and mm-hmm. then you're able to sell direct to consumer and yeah and like you know middleman. yeah and the supply chain kind of was you know like in a weird place so we didn't have bags for a little bit and i was like kind of nervous like in the beginning of COVID, i was like i don't know if people have money you know to actually get this thing and you know where would they wear it mm-hmm. yeah. and we dropped you know, bags in March, they sold out in one minute. And that ha- kept happening every single week after that. And we were like, wow, this is like unique. Because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we're dropping thousands of bags, you know, and they were going in one minute, two minutes, you know, and kind of just taking that and seeing the reaction from people online, you know, was like also just so informative on how you know you operate everybody's posting the same thing we don't Mm -hmm. we don't promote you know like we don't do ads for our bag it's like the ad is like viral like you see it on the street and that's like (laughs) the most important thing to me you know how excited do you get when you still see people wearing your bag or walking down the street or (laughs) i get really i mean i get really excited but i'm more excited if they don't know who the fuck i am like they just walk right past me to have nothing to do right not even in my not just nothing to do with that's me. a great life mm-hmm. you know what i mean and it's just like that's really cool but then it's also like you see people that you know you know and when you see them they like actually freak out you know and they like have their bag on them and that's just like new york for me you know that's like i feel like i'm at home mm-hmm. you know like always like i have but now it's like even more part of like you know a conversation i love i love that story about the shift because it feels like you disconnected from the matrix almost you disconnected from the matrix and <laughs> i just... feel like i won yeah, yeah. <laughs> no for real yeah it's like i wanted to, i wanted to own myself it's like no one in fashion owns their, their own business okay and everybody has to answer to someone or like you can't do this thing and you can't do that thing and it's like it's like right now I work with my best friends, you know, and I'm way happier. I'm not traveling to a place that seems foreign for me and I have to like conduct myself according to their rules, you know, and you know, it's like I'm literally living what I want each day. You and, know, so. and and it's a, a you know, a slap in the face to anybody who feels like you have to be a part of a system to get to a certain point. Yeah, and I think that that's the confusion, too, with people that don't know what this brand is. Like, sometimes I'm like, they're like, damn, those investors are probably really pissed. It's like, the investor is me. <laughs> like, right. you know, with bag security and the bag security program, like, when we did that, that was, like, a huge shifting yeah. point. Because it's just, like, really, like, all the things that you do need in fashion, just, like, it's like, we don't really need or want an investor. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I, like, you know, it's like, I don't want to sign half of my, you know, life work my name you know over to some company that's really inspirational you know what i mean no one could ever fire me you know i know people have been coming at you with crazy numbers (laughs) now they gotta be they they, they gotta be a price though right like depending on who it is um yeah but i mean most of that is like to my advantage you know it's like and if there's something that i don't want to do i don't have to do it nobody's making me do it Mm -hmm. it's like i'm doing everything that i want to do it's like starting a tv station isn't I think that anybody in fashion has done. Let's talk know? about Telfire TV. Because we also want to make sure uh, we eh, get into that. Eh. <laughs> so break it down how Telfire TV um, is different from any other station. Well, it's a 24-hour linear, non-linear <laughs> uh, public access, uh, you tough. know, uh, free um, you know, television station that you can upload all of your, you know, kind of 
you can upload your content. We look at it. It has like this algorithm that basically puts it into this cool, you know, flow. That... So we as regular people can upload our content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's an algorithm. Yeah, that, it, that, that it would show up. Um, you know, that's how you kind of get. It'll show up as commercials on the network. You always see like the work that you do. Like if mm -hmm. you've seen it on social media, you'll see it on the network. Right. Which is really cool. User generated. These are my co-hosts, by the way, and yeah. uh, co-conspirators in Top <laughs> TV, Ian and Gito. <laughs> that you know, they're popping all over the world, but they come like a lot of our collaborators come together to do this project. You mm -hmm. know, so now also you know back to the bags. Just a couple questions. So what's new as far as because I. I they were saying duffel bags and maybe a backpack. So what's new that people should be looking forward to? Damn. Envy, you duffel are up to date. Bag. Look at this bag. Yeah. I love it. Uh, that's duffel. the duffel bag. That's the medium one. Medium Obsessed, one. right? Yes. It's you can't amazing. take, right? Amazing. <laughs> 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 oh, no, we got all kind of sizes. Yeah, the smaller ones. Bigger. I think the smaller, smaller ones. Are like ones. Like Okay. This one was for your kids. For my wife. I need and I think you need the, the big, 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 big one. Yeah. 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 I need the big one for my plate. I got to put me. stuff in it. Yeah, there's a, there's a large duffel. You would like you might need like a You might need a bag duffel. for your phone. You know? What's good yeah. about that, though, is for, I always feel like sometimes you have, like, a medium amount of things to carry. It's not like you need a huge bag, but you can't have a little fanny pack. That's a great size. Yeah. It's like the bag story, you know, just like this bag, is more expensive. There's gonna be less expensive bags than the actual bag. There is a backpack coming. Okay. There is a backpack a lot coming. Of people have been asking, right? A backpack in collaboration with Beep. Oh. <laughs> uh, but we need to you're know. gonna see it. Can't say the date. Um, All these teasers. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> things are happening. Yeah, uh, <laughs> things are happening. Um, and then we like we've. The show that we did, you know, like it wasn't a seasonal collection. It's an evergreen collection that isn't going away. We're going to be selling it forever. Um, so you saw us like, you know, T-shirts, jeans, track suits, you know, kind of like our version of what basics are. I like um, those jeans. Can we see those jeans? Yeah. Please? You want to yeah. see the little. Look yeah. at those. Woo! Give it to them. I thought you had on. No, I thought he had on that shirt you're wearing, and he was just showing it's under his sweatshirt. Yeah, it's part of the jeans. That's the jeans. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, sweat, that sweatshirt hard like, too. Okay. Yeah, but this is part of the evergreen collection of stuff. <laughs> you know that will never go away. That we will be selling forever. I think um, I, I read too that y'all bag started doubling in January. The sales of them. Um, in January, I think. In January, what did you read that? I don't know. That was in the notes. Damn, <laughs> he said that was in the notes. In the news? In the, oh, notes, in the notes. The notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, then the notes are right. Trust the notes. They might not be. <laughs> <laughs> Trust the notes. But did they start doubling back sales? I mean, to be honest, like, I wake up, and I wake up to messages that are like, "Damn, I fucking missed it. I missed this thing," and I don't know like what happens. I just know that they sold out, and I'm like one minute, two minutes. Wow. And I know that we we made we make more bags each time and they keep selling out. Uh, so that's great. Now how can people upload their videos to Telfire TV so they can be on there? Um you do it on there's like a telfire.tv. Mm -hmm. You go to telfire.tv and there's a whole you know kind of thing that you Yeah, it's an app. <laughs> yeah. It's basically like an app like it would be like Netflix or mm -hmm. something like that you download it and then you can upload stuff Here's or just watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and kind of like we get thousands of videos like each week. Mm -hmm. So um, somebody's looking through them and like we post different things mm -hmm. each week. And then we have live shows too. So our runway show is a live show. Mm -hmm. um, Tizo Touchdown, shout out to Tizo, has uh, a new reality show on our network. Like when we started the network, there was no programming on it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we started it with no programming right. because we wanted it to happen organically and then also just like not be like what TV is. Right. You know what I mean? It's like it's very much like, you know, our customers are like, you know, uh, collaborators, mm -hmm. you know, because it's like once you buy a bag, whatever reason you're buying that bag for it's like you're like people are posting different things, making different videos. So it's like it serves like a very you know, kind of like multi-use purpose in mm -hmm. terms of like, 
you know, the customer reach, and what, you know, like what happens to that product after it leaves our hands and, and yours, you know, uh, and also to music, you know, it's like just like not having to have any commercials or advertisers or anything. It's like doing for like what our friends in music, Ian, Isaiah, you know, it's like you play things and, you know, you're able to spread things without people having to pay for them. <laughs> Definitely keep us abreast of what you're doing. Not that you have to because you sell out anyway, but I would love to tell <laughs> no, people. We, we need, I want this. I love when 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 black designers come and I feel like we make creators. the culture hot, right? Yeah. But a lot of times we but don't it make needs the to, money. But it needs to actually, yeah, yeah that's the thing. But and so, so the fact that, you know, when you have, when the duffel drops, so this drops and we can shout it out like we would shout out a Jordan release. Or like we shout out all this. We sh- the, our people should well, know the I same. Well, I mean, can know? we do that? Because, uh, yeah. you know, our bag security program, part three. What is that? What is bag, what is that bag so, security? So bag security, for all of those people like me that won't wake up <laughs> at seven in the morning you miss that to miss mm-hmm. a drop and, you know, stand in line and do all of that, we have one day out of the year that you can order any bag in any size in any quantity um, for 24 hours. Wow. Um, so and it's, guaranteed. it's like guaranteed. Guaranteed, mm-hmm. and, but it takes six months to get to you. That's um, cool. But, but you know it's on the way. You have something to look forward to. You know it's on the way. You know you have all the colors that you want. Um, I was just talking to your intern downstairs, and he was telling us that he was able to get his grandmoms, his moms, like, you know. So for people that hate the hype, that want the bag that that's one dope, day out cool. of the year. I'm not gonna lie, because the last drip cool. you guys did, I bought it and then I retweeted it. Because I was like, let me make sure I get mine first. <laughs> 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 and then I retweeted it. Right. Right. <laughs> <Early, yeah. laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, I don't wow. know how to get it. <laughs> it's the thing that, you know, the, I, I kind of like the more people that actually are in this conversation, the funnier and cooler my world gets. So mm-hmm. it's like, I'm not about it being so exclusive and like so hard for you to like attain. It's like, I don't think that that's cute at all. Right. You know, I think it's funnier when everybody has it. It's like your grocery bag. It's like your grandma has it. Like, you know, your little daughter has it, you know. So it's like, that's where I'm coming from when in, in a fashion place. It's like, I want things to be mass. And mass meaning like you actually shifted how culture is. It's like people literally know what that is because that's how they dress. You that's know, right. They don't even know what the designer is, but it's like, you know, like things I've made in the past, they've gone other places. That other people have known or being known for them, but it's like really like you know it starts at a certain thing, you know, and it should continue to be that conversation, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know nothing about fashion, so break down the glasses for me. What's the what's <laughs> oh the symbolism God. of oh, no wow. lenses? Um, these are these go to our our, our network. Oh yeah, these are recording. Yeah, so right it's now. like yeah. <laughs> so say hi. Yeah, Wait, yeah, yeah. Put them on. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, I've been making. Like, Show me the series. It's, they have cameras on. They record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah. thought you were joking. I don't believe you. <laughs> no, oh no, nah, it's recording right, right now. Right now. Yeah. Anything you were staring at is on camera. I can tell what's on there. Like, y'all motherfuckers crazy. No, they really have cameras. We love it. Yeah. Wow. Let me switch it up. You might see yourself on Tough Art TV. Wow. Uh-oh. Yeah. Whoa, but I've whoa. been making a movie um, for like probably like a year. Also, too, like part of our yeah. Tough Art TV team, Uma Chroma and Terrence Nance. T- Terrence Nance's idea, you know, that I wear camera glasses throughout, like, you know, I've been wearing them probably for the last year and a half. Yeah. So, like, kind of everywhere that I went, especially during the pandemic, I didn't have to have a camera crew with me you know also to to just get actual reactions Mm -hmm. from people you know that you know might be a little bit fake (laughs) you gotta get that release yes i I wear them every time i'm on tv (laughs) i wear them most times when i'm on shoots and stuff like that so uh yeah but this is like how we've been documenting different things like kind of like all over the world uh so like what's something crazy you captured that was unanticipated Mm. uh damn Someone stealing money from a family member. Damn. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so you could lead them on even when you don't have them on. You have the camera. Yes. Yeah, so I've been getting down. really, really, really interesting things. Like, wow. I can't say that my life hasn't gotten more interesting with glasses to see clearly. That's a dope with no idea. Lenses. That's like a movie in itself. <laughs> no, I have an idea for y'all. I'm going to tell you after this show. Really? You can't tell us? 
No, I'm going to tap the show. Okay. No. All right. Well, Spencer. we appreciate you all for joining us, and thank you so much. And keep doing what y'all doing. And like I said, keep us abreast of what y'all doing so we can continue to talk about it, talk about releases. I think yeah. That would be cool. We, we got to get that do BSK3, <laughs> our yeah. bag security program three. Right here. The date. The date we should do that. No, you got to come in. You got to come in. Yeah, I would. I would. I would really, 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 really,